Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of Checkpoint Chat. I'm really, really happy to see so many of you uh, listening to the very first episode. The uh, feedback and the just listenership has been sort of overwhelming. So I'm really happy that everyone seems to have enjoyed, enjoyed that first episode. Uh, I'm Alessandro Barbosa, one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined by Matthew Figuera. That's me. So yeah, yeah as, as you've said, thank you everyone for the feedback you've given us. Um, we were very happy with episode one and yeah, it's only going to keep improving and yeah, keep listening and keep giving us your feedback so you can make the show better and better. Yes, we've already got some really cool uh, suggestions that we're going to already kind of put into this episode. We're going to segment uh, every single topic into a different kind of button that you can press on Anchor. Apparently that stuff feeds uh, well bleeds over into Android apps that people use to listen to the podcast so you can better scrub through the topics that uh, interest you the most. Uh, but otherwise it's business as usual and until we get uh, our brand new recording equipment which should be I think two weeks time. I'm really excited to get that. Yeah, likewise. Um, I think... From our side, the audio quality, at least you can hear us, which is something. That's a good, good thing, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we're only going to keep improving. So yeah, I'm also excited for the new equipment to arrive, yeah. hopefully soon. And we're trying some new methods of uh, soundproofing, so that... <laughs> <laughs> I have a one of those, I don't know, it looks like a... Looks one of like those a room doc, doc, doctor screens or <laughs> <a> room <laughs> separated. Because no, no one can know we're recording a podcast. No, it has to be hidden. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is like, you know, when people were playing Dungeons and Dragons in their exactly. basements and it's Satan. Not, it's in just, 2018, Satanism is just podcasting. Uh, really. And we've got a giant GM screen behind us. We're actually GMing to you guys. Yeah, exactly. So welcome We're to. GMing your life. <laughs> <laughs> I I was super worried that um, you weren't going to make it today because I, I went to the park run this morning and you couldn't make it, yeah. sadly. And uh, then on the way back, there's like this crazy traffic. Uh, it looked like an accident at first uh, when I drove past it, but I actually stopped on the highway to see what was happening because a bunch of fucking people were stopping on the highway and i like kind of climbed on the highway uh separator and it, there was a cash and transit heist yep. just still still there when i drove is past. it still there yeah. oh my god so i drove past i mean i, I drove through about like maybe half an hour 45 minutes yeah after, after you me did. yeah um people still stop you there were people like you stopping on the side of the road Sorry. thanks I'm, thanks I'm for part of the problem. thanks for stopping traffic no it's all good um they are the other lane is completely blocked up thankfully not the the way oh, I was so it's coming. still completely closed yeah Damn. or they're still diverting people on the off-ramp so yeah there were people driving up the <laughs> off-ramp when I got to Atlas I was like oh this they, seems like a bad idea highway. Yeah. so if if you're listening to this on Monday we can't help you <laughs> with the traffic <laughs> get in your time machine you can avoid that jam <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah it was pretty crazy and I'm just glad it wasn't in that direction because like everything was closed and I was like, well, this is going to affect the podcast. Yeah. And, you but know, we don't are. really have so much time available mm. to us to record. So, you know, like yeah. the fir very first time was Tom Jones that screwed you. I know. know it was... And now it was well, uh, Atlas Road. Well, yeah, Atlas, Atlas Road. Road yeah. yeah. Well, just, you, you see, the highway yeah, is dangerous. just screwed. <laughs> it's like the Wild West out here. The closer <laughs> yeah. you get to the airport, the weirder things get. The, the more east you go, the wilder yeah. things get. That's That should be the slogan. Yeah. For the <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, traffic aside we have spent a good week playing some new games um so we're not going to be chatting exclusively about the witcher again today and a lot of uh, switch stuff although that will come eventually yeah because no you know it. there was a freaking direct. direct yeah i yeah. can't not talk <laughs> about that uh but you have played a game this week that i've been very interested in for a while i've bought it um but I haven't got around to playing it. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on Florence. On Florence, yeah. I keep wanting to call it Celeste for some reason because it's like <laughs> a game with a female protagonist saying, no, it's a single name game. Mm. Um, but so it's, what is Florence like it's, straight up? Okay, so just to give you some context, I, I was listening to the Kind of Funny game cast earlier this week and um, Greg Miller, one of the hosts, he touched on it saying he played this game called Florence. Um, and I, I don't know, there's just something about the way he explained it. I was like, well, that sounds really appealing to me because I, I love games that like touch you in a, in like, in a, at a, oh God, I'm losing my, my wording here, mm -hmm. uh, in an emotional capacity, if that makes sense. You know, they're like really just makes you feel something. Mm. So I'm all for the shooters and everything, but I particularly love those games that really like strike a chord in my heart or in mm -hmm. my emotions or whatever. Mm -hmm. So just the way he explained it, I was like, cool it's a mobile game it's not long to finish and i can definitely squeeze it in um at some point this week 
and talk about it. So yeah, I played it uh, just to give you an overview. Florence is really just a story of um, a lady called Florence. Surprise. Yeah. And you're just following her, a, a brief snippet of her life, um, her, her being alone and finding a relationship. Okay. And uh, just exploring that. But just the way you explore it, it's, it's just a, a unique game in the sense that there's, there's no dialogue. I mean, there's maybe like, there's like one or two segments where there's dialogue. But otherwise, you, you're interacting with her world just via a collection of, I'd call them mini games, although they're not really mini games. Okay. okay. Um, so to give you an example, um, the, the game's broken up into really short chapters. I mean, uh, the, I think there's 20 in okay. total and they, they take, they're like one to three minutes each. Yeah, not it's even. not a long game. It's, it's really yeah. short. You'll finish, you can finish it in a sitting, like let's okay. say 40, Perfect. 45 minutes, maybe if okay. you really drag things out. Um, but you're, you're following her story and then, uh, just to give an example of a mini game, her and this new love of her life, uh, I think his name's Krish, Krishna, Krish or Krishna. That's a cool name. Yeah. He, they, they, they basically exploring the city and you're literally just touching points on the map. And every time you do that, um, a Polaroid pops up mm-hmm. and you shake it to, cause you know, when you take a photo of a Polaroid, you have to shake it to develop. Mm-hmm. And that's all you're doing. So you literally, you'll touch a, a part of the city and it'll be like, um, Krishna's first time eating sushi. You know, you shake the photo, you you develop it, you see her and her boyfriend and the caption is there. And you're just exploring their relationship through these little... Like memories almost? Yeah, well, it's it's hard to explain. So let me give another example. When, when she first meets him, this is probably the coolest way I've seen a game... Well, one of the coolest ways I've seen a game telling a story in the sense that when you first meet him, okay, so you get a chat bubble, okay, and you have to assemble it like you would a puzzle, Okay, so there's, let's say, eight to ten pieces. And it's not hard to solve. I mean, it takes you like ten seconds, whatever. But you put the pieces in there, and then your speech bubble forms, and you say something. Mm -hmm. Then he says something back. Obviously, his speech bubble appears. Mm -hmm. As the date goes on, you find that there are fewer pieces in your speech bubble, which indicates that the conversation for her was difficult at first, like she's shy or whatever, but as she's building confidence the conversation's becoming easier. She kind of knows what to say. Yeah, so it, okay. you see, it, it just conveys, I mean, if I'm understanding it correctly, it conveys that she's becoming more comfortable with this guy and the conversation's flowing easier to the point where at the end of the day, they literally give you one puzzle piece and you have to drag it into your huh. speech bubble. So it's just cool little ways like that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but then even, sorry, using that same, idea, I mean, there's tons of these little ways you interact with the game. That's just probably one of the best examples um, later in the game, they have like a small argument and you're still, you're doing the whole puzzle piece thing, but you notice that the pieces are more jagged. Okay. Which shows that obviously there's intensity. Oh, like agitation. Yeah. Or, okay. So it's just, okay. it's just unique little ways to tell the story, which I mean, I don't think it's the first game that's ever done that, but it just really hits you. You, you feel like a, a different sense of emotion that, as opposed to them like physically talking or you no, know, if they're being dialogue, for example. Okay. Um, and just the way the game's presented. So it's got a, a gorgeous, um, art style the music is phenomenal so even if you don't uh, intend to play the game uh, the soundtrack's definitely on Google Play Music I'm assuming it's on Apple probably Music on Apple probably then, get it yeah. on YouTube whatever just listen to it it's it's beautiful and yeah I, I really enjoyed it okay yeah I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about it and a lot of people anecdotally saying that it's a really good experience if you're you know kind of not own exclusively if you're in a relationship but it mirrors a lot of the feelings that you, mm. you know you kind of go through on first meeting a person and you know getting comfortable with them mm. and stuff like that and uh i think i think i've forgotten what that feels like because i've been in a relationship for so long and i guess for you it's kind of the mm. same way like if you had to go back to dating someone or going on a first date again like i have no idea how that works anymore yeah um so for a game to kind of like contextualize that with these little bubble puzzle pieces oh, yeah. it's really I mean cool. and that's that's literally just one implementation I mean every every chapter has some or other thing that's happening mm. um to give you another example so um Florence is an artist and her boyfriend is a musician so you'll notice the the game uh, the parts of it played like an interactive comic book so you're scrolling and reading but other parts you're actually taking part in the story mm-hmm. um so one part you'll actually see him playing the cello and you'll see the animation and you'll hear the music and she's sitting back and you can see she's about to draw him or sketch him or something and all you do is you literally have a blank canvas you use your finger to you know color it in and that's okay. you sketching so there's just little interactions like that that yeah it, it, I, I, I don't know i just can't explain it it's just a unique way to tell a story and i mm. really enjoyed it i mean it was 50 bucks so i think a bit expensive for like 
a 40, a, for like 40 a 40 45 minute, yeah. minute game but i still think it's worth it um but like i said if you don't want to pick it up that's fine mm. at least listen to the soundtrack um and i think this studio it's their first game i actually think it's an australian oh, wow. studio i'm not um, too sure i can look I it up looked, maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i'm very curious to see what else they work on if this is what their first game looks like I, i've not i've got no context uh, context as to what they've worked on you like who is in the studio if yeah, they've worked yeah. on other stuff um, oh wait Allah actually one of the guys from Modern Mistaken worked on Monument Valley which is another oh, great oh yes I do remember reading uh, that mobile yes. game. Yeah, so I know there's that person um, yeah so it's available on iOS at the moment and it's launching on Android later I think it's soon I, yeah, I saw something 16th of March I yeah think. it's this so month sometime probably this week for you guys listening uh, that's really cool I'm very very like I said I, I bought it uh, a while back but I just haven't got around to playing it at all yet um it's been out since February. Yeah, I think it came out in February. That's when I started seeing a lot of people, a lot of uh, journalists, especially on Twitter, saying this is a really special experience. Mm. It's very unique. And, you, I mean, it's 50 bucks, which is weird because we think about mobile games as needing to be very cheap. Mm. Uh, but if you put that in a dollar value, I think it's like, on the dollar store, it's only three or four dollars. Yeah, three or four dollars. So it's really not that bad. Mm. Um, and for a 40-minute game that, you know, has stuck with you in such a way no, look, I, think it's 100% I, I do think it's it. still worth it yeah, yeah 100% I just know exactly as you say there, there's this perception that mobile games are there to be free or yeah. cost nothing and I think for an experience like that I mean just grab it play it in one sitting put your headphones or earphones in and just enjoy it it's even, unusual even when mobile games are free they're not free no <laughs> free to play timers <laughs> and all these microtransactions like, yeah that's why like when there was all this discourse over Nintendo I think they charged 120 rand for Mario Run when it first came out. And I still think maybe that was a bit too high, but I have no issue paying for a game on on mobile. And the fact that it's just on mobile, not feeling guilty about spending mm. that money, if it doesn't mean I'm going to have to sit through a 30 second ad every five minutes or yeah. whatever. So <laughs> I'm like, I, I've played a lot of games on mobile, like the uh, great Square Enix Go games, like Tomb Raider Go mm. and stuff like that, which are great. And uh, the Mario games have generally been... Um, the Nintendo games have... You know, Mario Run is right. The rest <laughs> have not been that great. Um, what is that other one that came out recently? There was an uh, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Oh, it was so like boring. It. <laughs> and man, I liked it for like two hours. I was like, this is so charming. And the game opened with this dog playing a guitar. And Ooh, I was like, shit, this is great. <laughs> and then it just... It was the same thing. It was just like you have to wait X amount of time for it's this thing. It's dog playing a guitar oh. for two hours. You're like, okay, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so over it. it. So I hope that when we eventually get an incarnation of like a uh, Zelda on mobile because I'm pretty oh, sure that will that'd come. Be so nice. I hope it's like a contained adventure like Super Mario Run was uh, and not like, oh, you know, craft arrows for Link to shoot. Uh, wait two days to <laughs> kill one Bacoblin. Speed it or up whatever. for $5 only. Oh, know? God, <laughs> gross. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm very happy that you enjoyed Florence mm. and, um, yeah, I think people should play. They should also play Monument Valley. Have you played Monument Valley? I've played most of the first one. And I also enjoyed it. It's just one of those games. I, it's the same. Even I've, I've played um, the Lara Croft Go. Yes, the, yeah. Tomb, very is good. it Tomb Raider Go or Lara Croft Go? I think it's ooh, one of those. I think it's Lara <laughs> Croft Go, actually. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, same thing. I have a thing with mobile games. I'll play them and I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my attention span falls off or. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe that's why Florence worked. Yeah. <laughs> Less than an hour, I saw it from beginning to end. And yeah, but really the puzzles are nowhere as intense oh, as no, no. Monument it's, Valley. No, cause... no, no. The the puzzles. I mean, there's maybe one or two. I was like, okay, it took me like two minutes to finish. Where you're like, wow, that's a long time. Not really. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's not. Bad, um, yeah. They they're not really puzzles. It's just simple ways to interact with the game. Okay, wait, I, like, I suppose there are puzzles, but it's the point is it's a, a different way for you to interact with the game just to make your way through the story. It's not primarily a puzzle game. Like no, no, Portal no, no. Or it's yeah. It's really not a puzzle game like Portal. Okay. It's just a means to play through the story. Okay, okay. Yeah. To kind of like contextualize what you're doing. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. I've uh, uh, Every now and then I get hooked on a mobile game that I usually play, um, you know, just in free time. Like I've been spending a lot of time at the bank lately just because <laughs> adult things are boring. <laughs> Adults like um, so, so when I forget my Switch at home and I'm not playing Celeste in the bank, I started playing a really old game called um, Alto's Adventure. Mm -hmm. And I started playing it because the sequel came out last month as well called Alto's Odyssey. And uh, Alto's Adventure is a like snowboarding game, Mm -hmm. but it's super chilled. 
Um, well, is that pun intended? Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, I thought it was a far more relaxing, like snowboarding game, because if you kind of look at the um, the trailers, it does look very tranquil and whatever. But it's like hard. Mm. Um, you have to really focus when you're doing it. But it's got this art style that reminds me a lot of like if if Journey became a 2D game, I would think it would oh, look like this. Yeah, and oh, it's got a really nice. good soundtrack. Um, and it does the thing of like. You're just trying to get as far as you can go before you hit a rock and like die or whatever. Um, but <laughs> it's it, chill, but you can die. <laughs> yeah, but you can die. And there's also these little guys. Like every now and then, you you uh, snowboard past this like it looks like a teepee, like in in just like a tent. Mm. And this dude who they call elders will just run at you on a llama. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on a llama. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Because the whole thing is like you're you're um, you're trying to collect the llamas that have escaped from your town and there must be so many because mm-hmm. you find them forever yeah. um but this guy will chase you on a llama and if he gets too close he just clubs you over the head oh, nice. and yeah you die. cool yeah <laughs> but uh the game does this thing of like it gives you three objectives for each level um and then once you finish those three objectives you get three more so it kind of keeps you going oh i didn't know you could do that and then mm. you know you try and achieve it so it's a very I play 10, 15 minutes of it at a time and I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm done. done. But it's really good and it's often on sale now now that the sequel is out. The sequel looks really good as well. Very cool. Um, so yeah, I'd grab that if you find it on sale as well. Awesome. Um, but aside from that, I've been playing a game that I can't talk about too much. You see, this is tricky. Um, when I get a game from GameSpot, uh, unlike... You know, when we used to work at Critical Hit, um, when we got embargoes, we usually got the whole embargo. Mm. So I'm sure you remember reading through like a contract and being like, okay, I can't mention this. I can't mention that. I can mention up to here from this day, stuff like Mm. that. This is how these embargoes work. Uh, When I get one from GameSpot, I don't really get that information. I just get a date. (laughs) So I don't really (laughs) know the extent to which I can talk about uh this game the oh. game is the game's cube 2 oh, okay. um thought you weren't going to tell us no no, no I, I, I mean i, I can i can t- i'm i'm sure anyone who has me as a friend on psn has been seeing me play that game pretty much every night this week um did you ever play the first cube Mm-mm. um no. so it's cube like q u b e oh uh, okay because Quebe. yeah Quebe. <laughs> <laughs> it's made by a british studio as far as i can tell and i never really played the first one that much as well uh because it came out in like 2012 it was a student project, much like the very first Portal that turned oh, wow. into its own thing. Um, and it reminds me a lot of Portal, actually. Oh, that's um, cool. You don't have a Portal gun, but you have these gloves that can manipulate different colored cubes within the mm-hmm. like, puzzle rooms that you're in. So a um, so like a red block will be able to extend from the wall and a blue block will be able to bounce you up into the air and... Uh, a green block can spawn another block that you sometimes need to move onto switches around the environment. So very much like Portal, it's you have these tools and you need to use them within these very specific rooms to solve very specific puzzles. Mm. Um, and uh, the sequel kind of changes things up in a way that I didn't realize until I investigated a lot about the first game. So the first game, you had these rooms, but you could never choose where these different color tiles were. The rooms had them kind of placed uh statically so you went into a room like cool there's a red block there's a yellow block or whatever and you can't move those Mm. in this one the rooms are empty and you have certain blocks that you can assign colors to so with my gloves i can be like i want that tile to be red i want this one to be blue so it gives you a bit more room to kind of uh, experiment experiment. yeah Yeah. Uh, even though i feel like there's definite single ways to solve puzzles i don't think there's a lot of um, breadth as to how you can kind of break them in interesting ways, which I think Portal does really well. Mm. Um, I think it, if I'd played the first game and come to this, I would be like, this is a definite improvement um, over it. Uh, so it's really good uh, so far. Um, the review embargo lifts on Tuesday, so I'll be able to give you more details about how it works later on in the game and like a, a completely consolidated score in mm. a sense uh next time <laughs> but i think if you've played the first one i think this one's pretty much on your radar um and it's on playstation and pc oh, cool. stuff it does a really cool thing with the playstation 4 controller because um you have these gloves and you're constantly switching between which colors you want to place so uh what are, what are the ones i have i think i have like green blue and red and whenever you switch there's a 
there's a cube on the bottom of the screen that switches color. But if you've got the newer controller, which has the light bar on the touch bar, oh, yeah? it also changes the color on there. Uh, so if, okay. if I'm playing with my controller, I can literally just move my eyeballs down slowly and I see what color I'm on, oh, which is really cool. Like mm, it's a, it's nice a neat feature. Touch, yeah. 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 So yeah, I'll probably chat a lot more about that next week when I can actually do it without threat of losing my job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't but <get> fired. <laughs> one, one game I want to chat about, which I actually played last week, but we never got the time to play, uh, chat about it, was Into the Breach. Yep. Have you heard anything about Into the Breach? Um, I've seen a lot of it. Well, I've seen bits and pieces of it on Twitter. People's, uh, it's a turn-based game, I take yes. it. Yes. With people, you're trying to save people or something. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 you like... <laughs> it's, it's like a miniature chess version of Pacific Rim in a way. Okay, so but yeah. the, the point I'm getting at is on Twitter, there's a lot of emphasis on people like making the wrong tur- the oh, wrong yeah. move or taking too much time or too little time. So yeah. I, I get a general vibe, but I've never played the game or seen it myself. Did you ever play XCOM? Yeah, yeah, and I played okay. XCOM. So what, when you played XCOM, um, okay, firstly, did you enjoy XCOM? Mm, <laughs> it's subjective. I enjoyed the game XCOM. Um, but I didn't like the fact that when I named people after people I know in your life, and they died. <laughs> they died. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I enjoyed XCOM. I just never got into it, I suppose, as, as intently as other people did. Okay. I can appreciate it for what it is, but there's something about it. I'm like, it's a little bit too intense or stressful for me, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that, because I know there's a lot of emphasis on like not letting your soldiers die. And if they do, yes. you know, they've got a whole story, especially if you've named them like, Lenska or Alessandro and you're like oh, oh no, no. <laughs> I, I'd never do that then oh, I no. feel like I'm really betraying them like good lord yeah whenever a friend dies I'm like oh my god you just died I'm so sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> left Alessandro on the battlefield I had know, to risk like, him out yep, man sorry <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the one thing I've seen echoed from a lot of XCOM players is that they don't like a lot of the random aspects to it so I mean you've seen images of like an XCOM soldier with a gun right in the face oh my gosh. of an alien. And it's like 90% chance to or hit. Like and they, 20% or like 20% chance. whatever, and they yeah. miss. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what that, is this? Com- in a game where, like you just described, where XCOM, where your decisions have really big rippling effects through the rest of your run, Yeah, you know, that that's horrible to have to deal with. And an XCOM run... I've I've encountered instances where I've played a, a story and like in the middle just had one really bad mission and it's completely wrecked my progress. Oh no. So Into the Breach isn't like that. Oh good. Yes. <laughs> That's I think why I'm vibing with it a lot better. Um not that I don't like XCOM, but uh so it's made by the guys who did Faster Than Light, FTL. Did you play FTL? No. Also okay. heard a lot about it. <laughs> so FTL was really good. FTL was a uh like a roguelike space adventure you constantly had to keep your ship um safe from invading parties and that involved you like rooting power to like your weapons and taking it away from your shields or rooting power to like the medical bay or like a bay that is on fire or just balancing all your you're balancing a lot of stuff but the thing I, i i struggled with uh in ftl is it was very unforgiving from the get-go so if you made a bad decision in the first 30 seconds of a run it could destroy (laughs) your run two three hours down the line i know yeah so and that was incredibly frustrating because you've just lost a bunch of time and the Mm -hmm. game didn't really uh signal well enough that oh this is probably a bad thing to do a minute in but we'll tell you in three hours time that that <laughs> fuck remember that thing you idea. did three hours ago yeah exactly you screwed up <laughs> yeah so ftl was a very difficult type of a different type of difficult um that i enjoyed but i saw a lot of problems with it mm. so into the breach is different in that regard as well so what it is is like a chess game you have a grid that is eight by eight blocks um, in size, so 64 blocks in total, mm-hmm. which sounds tiny. Mm. It's not. Um, it does actually sound very tiny. Yeah, it sounds tiny. I mean, if you see a screenshot of the game, you're like, man, there's really it's, not a space, not a lot of space yeah. to move. And you're given control of a squad of three, let's call them mechs, even though most of them are just tanks, um, <laughs> that all have unique abilities. Uh, and the idea is that you are trying to just um, complete these four islands on, Earth, on an Earth where most most of the earth has been flooded so there's only like four land masses and you need to protect them from these uh big monsters or kaiju or really just big insects that emerge from the ground um 
And it's not so much about keeping your squad alive. It's more about keeping the citizens of these islands alive. So you have this meter called an energy, or it looks like an energy meter. <clears throat> and that persists during your runs. If that thing reaches zero, your run is gone. And like it, and everyone it dies. Shows. Yeah, everyone dies. Oh. You go back in time and you oh. try again. <laughs> time travel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, that meter is influenced by like, if a monster hits a building, it loses a pip of life. Or if a monster has... A, an attack that does three damage and hits like a row of buildings then you lose three pips of life mm. and the whole idea is to just keep that thing as high as possible your mechs don't really matter um which is a weird mindset to get behind because games often especially games like XCOM, they try and elicit this uh sense that you have to kill all the enemies on the map or mm. you just have to get to the end yeah, whereas into the breach is like you have four turns left um just survive and very often that just leads to me uh, knocking enemies out of the way of buildings or, um, you know, making sure that more of them don't emerge into the battlefield or, you know, kind of running down the clock instead of going, hey, I could kill this guy. Mm. Let me try wipe the board. That's not the so objective. It's literally just surviving then. It's surviving. Yeah. Cool. Your, your objective is just surviving. Um, but it, it's got this really neat tactical twist to it where you can always see what the enemy is going to do. Yeah, so time travel again. <laughs> yes, essentially, yeah. They kind of contextualize it really well. But essentially what happens is the enemy, they all take their turns and then they move around the board and then they show you where their next attack is going to hit. Mm. So there'll be like a red line saying, okay, he's going to attack, you know, to the right of this building. His friend is going to be attacking this other building, whatever. And that gives you the chance to kind of move your units around and start messing with their projected parts. So that enemy will always attack in a specific direction, no matter where you move him to. So it leads to these cool instances where it's like, oh, this one bug is going to punch a building in front of him. But if I take my uh, bipedal mech and knock him one square to the left, now he's attacking a harmless mountain and not a building. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Or, so they, they still follow through the attack, but yes. you can like shift them, for example. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, you can use like an artillery tank that shoots like a bullet in the middle of a square and then every square around it gets pushed back one. So you can like uh, use okay, that cool. to clear a few enemies out of the way. And then you can do cool things like you can move an enemy into the path of another enemy attack <laughs> uh, so that they end up attacking each other. You can knock enemies into water and then they some some of them instantly die if you do that. Um, and you end up building, the more you play and the smarter you get with it, you end up building these like chain reactions. Uh, okay. So the game kind of tells you, okay, the enemies are going to attack in this order. So you can be like, cool, well, I want him to then move there because if he attacks first, he's going to kill his mate, which means this building is going to be safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if this guy moves here, then, you know, it's like these... That's why I you think people out. say it's it, you look at this board for like minutes at a time. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> and you're just trying to look for the m most optimal way to use your turns mm. because uh, a bad turn can end your run completely. Mm. You can have a bad turn and not see one thing and you can screw yourself completely. And because that energy meter persists between battles, if you like get it down to two pips of health, within the first two uh, missions you've had on a single island, you're like, your run is screwed. Yeah. But unlike FTL, a run usually only lasts me about 30 to 40 minutes. Oh, okay. So when I end up dying, I don't feel like, well, fuck, that was a waste of time. Mm. You know, it's Just like, cool, restart. Get I've good. learned a bit. Yeah. And it's got a persistent like leveling thing. So when you restart your timeline or restart a run, you can only take back one of your three pilots Oh, okay, so firstly, if your mech dies in battle, you don't lose that mech for the rest of your run, but you lose that pilot. Okay. And pilots, as they rank up, um, start having like passive abilities that will help them. Like my most treasured pilot right now can't be um, webbed down onto a block like some insects use web to kind of like oh, prevent you from place. moving. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't get affected by that. And she can also attack on blocks with smoke, which usually blocks an attack. Uh, so I constantly try and keep her alive. Can you name your pilots? Yes. Oh you no. Can. <laughs> well, I can't no, no, play no, this no, no. Game. Wait, you can't. You can't name them. They have names. They're all unique, uh, uniquely okay, named. Okay. So I can't even remember her name now. But she's cool. She's, <laughs> she's my best rad, pilot, yeah. but I don't know her name. She's cool, and you some can you can you put some pilots into different mechs, so you can be oh, like, okay, so okay this pilot's passive ability is actually useful in the tank, not 
in this Mac, mm. whatever. Um, so yeah, after each run, you can only take one pilot back with you and then you get two new pilots. So it's this interesting balancing game of making sure that you're leveling up your squad efficiently, but also you're trying to keep them alive. And, you know, then there's all these other mechanics like time capsules that sometimes randomly appear in missions and they'll give you a pilot from the future who's super like <laughs> useful. Yeah. Or, or like um, you have to balance uh, missions that reward you with more energy for your energy meter or um, power nodes, which you can use to unlock new weapons for your mm. mechs. Like there's a really cool meta game. So the more you play, you both learn, but you also build up your squad so that it's more capable out mm. in the battlefield. And then you can unlock other trios of squads that all get very complex. There's one squad which just has tanks that use elemental damage. And it's like, right, I yeah. thought I understood this game. And then I'm like, nope, I, <laughs> I don't know how to use them at all. So... It's a super, super cool game. That's cool. Super cool, super cerebral, super, like you just thinking all the time. It feels like chess in every, it's just so well designed. Mm. Like if I was a designer on, if I was a designer in general, not even just on strategy games, I would be looking at this game and going, how the hell did they nail they do this? It, yeah. Like how did they get this so right? Because it's just, it's to me, it's perfect in every way. How long have you been playing it for now? Um, I've played, I think like, six runs or so um the furthest i've got is to the second island nice <laughs> um so I've, yeah my first few was disastrous but i like had the perfect run i got through the first island without taking any damage to my energy meter and actually maxing it out and i think on the second battle in the second island i died it was just like i they introduced new mechanics with the environment and stuff and i was just not ready like my brain was just not working the amount <laughs> of times i like did something and then I saw the enemy move. I was like, oh shit. I didn't even like I didn't even <laughs> think Regret they could do everything. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like instances where there were enemies attacking a building from all directions. And I'm like, like well, <laughs> well, can't save that building. Like shit. Done. Yeah. Well, what are you playing it on? It's oh, on, it on it's only on PC at the moment. Oh no. Yeah. No switch. I know. Damn it. <laughs> I know. It was exactly the first thing I thought. I was like, man, this game would be so good on Switch. I mean, it sounds like uh, visually, I <clears> don't <throat> think it's too demanding mm-hmm. no, so it's got it could this work, really cool pixel art it could work yeah. on mobile as well for yeah to this, well so. ftl uh, i mean okay so the developers are only two people so oh, wow. i guess that's why <laughs> it takes some time like ftl took i think two years to come from pc to ipad oh, um wow. but i would not be surprised at all if ipad is on their roadmap some, at some point yeah. yeah because that game is perfect for something with touch because you can just drag it yeah. to new blocks or whatever um but it's like super, it's not demanding. I'm actually playing it on my, my laptop more than anything else. Oh, cool. I, I so sit it is mobile. Of, <laughs> you're in, a, in a way, yeah. I sit in front of the TV and play. Um, it's it mobile and you anything. go to your TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go to a park with my laptop. What is this? No, yeah. But it, it's a really cool game. It's like 100 bucks on Steam, which oh, feels like a steal uh, for yeah. a game of that I've played probably like four or five hours mm. already. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to play more because it's just one of those games that every now and then I'm like, hmm, yeah, I could play like one or two runs and that's an hour worth of play and I learned a bit and then I'm like, cool, I'm You're done. Yeah, You're I'm out. done. You know, it's it's really quick fire. It's I wouldn't say it's easy to get into because you have to sit with it and learn it, mm. but it's easy to pick up and just hammer out a few rounds. It's very, yeah. Well, yeah. I suppose yeah, then after playing a few rounds, you do pick up, you start picking up little things, I suppose. And you, yeah. You know, you start digging that, deeper you, and you find Yeah, the more you play it, the better you get at it. Mm. Yeah. So I'm really digging it. And I, if you have a Windows, ooh, if you have a Windows machine of any kind, like 100% grab it. And I'm sure it will come to things like Mac and I assume it's consoles. It seems eventually. like the kind of game that will, over time, just port yeah. to everything. I think it's just, you know, there's two people, so they don't, they work on one platform at a time and I don't blame them. Game development's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's so easy. Don't lie. No, it's so simple. God, <laughs> just copy paste everything to Switch, please. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. Just it's just drag the exe uh, over exactly. to the Switch icon, and it just does magic, and, and then, then it's done. It, and then it works. Yeah, yeah. It works flawlessly. <laughs> Sometimes it even works better because that's the magic of programming. Oh know? yeah, you like well, <laughs> I'm so good at programming. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been playing anything else? I mean, you've played um, a bit of the more The Witcher, or yeah. Uh, I've played a lot more of The Witcher, but I'm going to not talk about The Witcher because I think I'll get to a stage where I can talk about it every single week. And as much as I think everyone loves The Witcher, I'm going to mm-hmm. try mm-hmm. break it up because it is something I'm going to play over months. You know, I but can you- tell you, I can tell you guys though that I did finish the the Bloody Baron quest. Yes, 
That's and I did I did message Alessandro saying, oh my fuck. It was <laughs> just crying be- faces everywhere. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, I can't believe this happened. And yeah. But uh, to, to just to fast forward, I've, I've left Vela now. I'm in uh, Novigrad. Oh, okay. The big city. I've literally just walked in, um, walked it's around a bit. It's met, pretty, met right? Tris, yeah. And I've just left it at that oh, now. Tris. So yeah. <laughs> It's it's an interesting city. I, I did the thing of when you, I arrived at night and there's just drunks walking around <laughs> the street. So and, Joburg. Yeah, it's Joburg. <laughs> <laughs> and I meditated till the morning because I needed, I don't know, supplies or I suppose my, my potions, whatever. And it, it's just funny that the, the city like operates like normal, like drunks. Mm. Well, I mean, there's still the odd drunk, but it's it was cool to see how it went from nightlife to just everyday proceedings. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, people on the market walking around. You walk in, there's a casual witch burning ceremony i'm like oh my god <laughs> this game's Ooh, too intense i forgot about that yeah, yeah. okay um yeah but I'm, I'm not gonna dive into that now I've, i'd love to talk more witcher but she's like mm. i think i'm just glad you got to the end of the bloody baron I know. Thing, because after last week i was like <laughs> you knew what oh, was coming yeah, I, I knew exactly what was happening you knew yeah. the, the cry faces were coming <laughs> yeah because i made the exact same decisions as you and i was very distraught when i, I got know. to the oh, end of gosh. that quest um yeah, without but, spoiling anything yeah it's one of those things where i mean the witch has been out for ages i'd love to tell you that well maybe i will next week or the following say let's talk about this person dying whatever but yeah yeah i'll, we'll, I'll save it we'll, we'll, we'll say you I know, know i know just people, a quick spoiler you know <laughs> people out there like craig are still waiting to play uh Witcher three so <laughs> <laughs> i want to spoil people it backlogs that span decades uh, decades yeah um, but what I, I haven't played it recently. I played it about two or three weeks ago. It's uh, an indie game called Fury. I don't know if you've ever played uh, it. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so it's actually been around for about a year or two, but it came to Switch, surprisingly. Mm. So just to surprise you, I'm Bring playing all your stuff. Games and, to Switch. <laughs> Bring everything to Switch and I'll play it. That's my <laughs> disclaimer. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a game, been around for a while, but it came to Switch. And I picked it up based purely on a YouTube video I watched. So um, I, I was influenced, basically. Um, I was watching a, a video, uh, uh, I'd watched a video from someone called Video Game Donkey. He did his okay. top 10 of 2017. Okay. Um, so I watched it about, about a month or two ago and he, he just runs through his list and he touches on all the, you know, the usuals, you know, like Zelda, whatever, whatever. And then when he came to Fury, he was just like, the soundtrack of this game is amazing. And like, oh, and, he, and then he, yeah, he, so he's like, the soundtrack is amazing. Like, and you know, he just set the scene so perfectly. So I, I'm not going to paraphrase it because i'll never do his video justice so mm-hmm. i suggest you go watch it but point is i watched it i was like hmm cool uh good looking game cool soundtrack it's on switch now i'm definitely gonna play it so i did pick it up um and i loved it also it took me it's not not a long game it took me about five hours to finish oh perfect okay. um yeah so it fits perfectly for me not too long you know i've got to save my spare time for witcher yeah um, yeah um, but just just to explain it briefly, uh, Fury is really just a boss rusk. Uh, b- boss, boss boss rusk. Boss. Yes, <laughs> boss rusk. Dunk, dunk the bosses a in boss your tea. Rush game, <laughs> <laughs> um, where you literally you 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 just fighting bosses, and when you're done beating a boss, you walk to the next boss and you fight the next boss, and you're okay. done fighting that boss, you walk to the next boss. Um, story starts out very murky. You're just a guy in a prison and someone set you free are you a guy i thought you were like an animal thing no no you're, you're a dude with oh, a sword okay. so okay. very anime Not a very cool. yet. no <laughs> so you you basically let out of prison by some character you don't know and he's just like like getting well you're in prison kill the jail it's the key to getting out okay mm-hmm. so you got and the first boss it, it's really just a tutorial and it's showing you like cool here's your attack here's how you dodge here's how you um parry and it just works you through the phases of here's how the movement and the combat works and it's very simple it's literally as i said you've got an attack button you can charge your attack you can dodge you can parry and like that's literally it. but there's little intricacies in between which you sort of figure out as you play okay um <clears throat> yeah so you, you beat the first boss and then you literally just like i said you just walk to the next boss which is funny because when the game starts it says here's a button to auto walk Okay, so you push it and your guy just walks. You can't run in the game when you're not fighting. You okay. can literally just walk to the next location. So you just like kind of control where uh, he's turning or? No, no, no. So, okay, maybe I'm explaining that badly. Okay, so in between the boss fights, you just walk into the next arena and it's it's a linear path. You can't really explore. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Okay, so but 
you walk and while you're walking the, the game's made in a way that it's very cinematic so the camera angle's changing and it's zooming in and out and it's panning it's very theatrical okay and as you as you're beating these bosses you don't know why you've, you just know you're a prisoner they've, they've thrown you in prison for whatever reason and to get out you need to kill you know well work your way through all these these um prison guards if you could call them that okay and this character who frees you is just talking you through you're like, okay, you've beat this boss, but now the next one's going to do this, 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 whatever. Sounds like a Dragon Ball Z episode. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, tune in next time. <laughs> Find out, tune in in the next hundred episodes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll throw that spirit bomb. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but you start realizing like why you're in prison and why these people are keeping you there. And it's just a really fun game. So between the walking bits, the, the fighting is actually really cool. It's a, it's a shoot 'em up, like bullet hull, you're dodging. Oh, okay. Millions of bullets while finding little windows to chip away at the boss's health. Cool. Um, but the fights work in phases in the sense that you have an open arena, let's say, where all the bullet hole happens. Okay. Uh, you've both got health bars. When you chip away, when you get the boss's health bar down, uh, the fight goes into another phase, which is close combat. So oh, literally, okay. you having melee versus the boss. Okay. Oh. And then you do that. And so you finish that phase with close combat, parrying, dodging, whatever, getting yeah. the health down again. And you go to the next phase, which then it opens up, goes back to arena mode. But then the boss has like a spin on it. Like, well, the, the person did these attacks, now it's doing those attacks and these attacks. So it gets oh, progressively shit. harder. This is cool. Yeah, it's it's really, really cool. I'd strongly recommend it if, if you like... I, I thought it was know. just bullet hell stuff because from no, the no. screenshots, all you see are these frame pixels going yeah, yeah, everywhere. So, and- but I mean, I enjoy that stuff, but... There's just even the close combat is really really cool, and you you're just figuring out how to beat the bosses, and yeah, when you beat them, you be like, cool, did that, go to the next boss, Damn, and then, that then there's, there's some spins in the boss. So like, um, the the first bosses you fight are pretty straightforward. Like they'll run away, shoot at you, come close, do some close combat stuff, run away. You have to dodge, parry. You know, all you're basically weaving together all your movement sets, okay, um, to overcome them. But then the bosses start getting more complicated in the sense that so the one boss you fight is like a master of time. Okay. Um, so I didn't mention, but you've got a sword, but you've also got a like a handgun or an energy weapon, let's say, where you can shoot bullets as well, or you can do a charge shot. Um, but what this guy does, he eventually stops time, and if you shoot a bullet, it just stays still because you stop time. You can still move independently. Okay. But they add cool little spins like that into the game. So, you, so like when he unpauses time, all those bullets carry oh, on in their yeah, path. Yeah. So, but you, you. So the first time I fought him, I was busy shooting. Yeah. My cool, my bullets aren't going anywhere. But then when you're busy navigating the arena, you have to start dodging your own bullets as well because they're just hanging there. Uh, okay. And so it's little things like that. Um, but cool. even even the first phase of that um, fight, he he basically. Um, circles himself in like protective armor i'd call it that and you have okay. to chip away at your bullets so you're shooting at it but your bullets are rebounding back at you as well oh and then he's okay. freezing time and yeah so oh. they, they just weave together cool little things oh, like man. that i mean so you get a boss like that you get another one uh just to give you an example who's a sniper okay okay so obviously they like keeping their distance and yeah. some of the arenas are huge you know you you can't see the boss but with the sniper boss you just see this little laser sight focus on you so you have to dodge it or like get behind cover and you have to figure out where this person is okay so then you get to them you do a bit of damage they move you have to figure out where they are um so i'm i know I'm, I'm explaining this horribly no 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm getting a really good picture and i'm glad you're explaining it because like from the screenshots that i've seen and the limited videos i've watched and it it just looked like a i knew it was a boss rush thing mm. but i just thought it was a bullet hell boss rush thing akin to like uh titan souls or cuphead really yeah well i mean so th- that's i suppose half the game because the boss fights are really bo- broken down into different phases so like i've said you will have a bullet health phase and you have a close combat phase mm. and you transition to the next part of i the didn't fight, know this close more. combat phase existence yeah. so i mean cool. so the a couple of bosses you fight are literally just close combat Damn. which is also really cool and what's the uh, sort of like system there is it because you've got a sword is it like so, you're building combos and stuff okay like that? so no it's it's the the movement in this game is really straightforward it's not like you have multiple attack buttons you literally have one attack button okay okay or you can charge your attack as well okay um so when you've got the close combat things uh, the way the way it works out so just to i suppose explain this a bit better or give some understanding as to why i enjoy this game uh, when i started playing it uh, when a boss is about to attack you, close combat, there's an audio cue. You can hear it. So you should know then to like dodge or 
do your parry. Okay. Oh, and what I've got to mention, if you parry at the right time, you regenerate a bit of health as well. Okay. So there's a nice balance. If you're losing a lot of health, you learn to parry and build up your health again. Um, what is I getting at now? <laughs> I've just lost my train of thought. Um, God, I've gone blank now. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking, I mean, I, I, I think I get the gist of, of what you what you're kind of conveying the the you aren't building up loads and loads of combos you're just using a button and oh yeah sorry that's what i was talking about yeah sorry the 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 simple move set um so you, you basically just in the close combat you you get these audio oh that's what i was talking about okay thank you for bringing <laughs> back onto the track. so you get these audio cues and when you start the game it's actually very frustrating because you you hear the audio cue and you know it's coming mm -hmm. um, but you might be a little bit too slow in blocking or dodging yeah but I found the more I played the game, the more I got into it, eventually I picked up an audio cues and I was just subconsciously blocking at the right time. Okay. Which then gives the, the battles this really nice flow. Because it really does play out like an anime or something where a boss comes, you, you parry like perfectly and then you, you find the opening and you attack, you chip away. Then they attack, you parry perfectly and yeah. you counter attack. Yeah. So you get this really addictive like flow of combat that I suppose you have to learn because you're not just going to pick it well an issue like a I don't know like a MLG uh, pro like proper yeah maybe X, no but, scope. but I suppose even like Dark Souls people Bloodborne people people who know like with bosses timing is everything and patience and yeah. stuff like that I suppose then you'll pick it up and just know like this is how the game works but for me it was frustrating at first but then after I don't know maybe an hour two hours I got it like then it clicks I was like cool I really get this game I enjoy the the flow of combat yeah um yeah, so I, I played it a couple of weeks ago, finished it, and now there's a harder difficulty. Oh, good. Where, where if you attack a boss, they really lose like a little bit of health and they do more complicated <laughs> attacks. So it's really hard now. Um, the game's got about 12 bosses, I think, 10 okay. to 12. I'm playing it on the harder difficulty. I've only just beat the second boss. Uh, okay. And it, it's so really it's difficult. Yeah, it makes it way harder. So I'm still getting some value out of the game and I'm really loving it. Okay. And you said it's like a four or five hour thing. Yeah, I mean, you can play it once, be done with it. I'm just like, I enjoyed it enough That's that really I want cool. to test myself and see. If this I sounds like, I played a lot of Cuphead uh, earlier in the year when uh, it was like the Festa break and whatever, because I never got the chance to sink my teeth into it last year. And I like Cuphead a lot, um, but I find some of its bosses absolute fucking bullshit. Mm. Like some of its bosses are just cheap and bad and not some good. One or two of these bosses, I was like, I don't know how anyone could, love, for example, on, on the harder difficulty, I don't know how I'm going to beat them. Because I'm like, on the normal difficulty, you do have a decent amount of health and you don't lose like all your health if you get hit by something. Okay. okay so you you can sort of work your way through the bullshit. Like, I don't know how I'm going to dodge it, but I'm going to take the damage and build up my health later, for example. Um, so there is a bit of that, but I don't know how... There well, must if, be a way. If, if, it do, if way. it doesn't feel like it's, you know, so you're playing this harder difficulty now, but does it feel like just straight up unfair or just like I just need to get no, better? No, no. So the, the buses I'm on now, it's not, un so they, they do take multiple attempts because they're a lot harder. No, but it's, yeah. it's, I've never felt like, oh my God, this is just unfair. It's like, okay, I see how they made it harder. I just need to learn how to okay. like move through all these bullets or realize that when after this boss does this thing i need to dodge this way or whatever yeah. so you're learning but i know that some of the later bosses especially the, towards the end they're like really hard i'm i'm terrified to see how <laughs> they they make them even harder you know yeah, like yeah. what are they doing that's going to make it worse when it really was so hard yeah um but yeah i'm I super it, keen yeah. to give this a try now because there's elements in there that i didn't know existed mm. and apparently the uh, soundtrack is phenomenal the soundtrack is really cool is it like good, a good. synth hey, yeah it's like electronic synth nice I'd I'm, say, yeah i'm here all day for it's that, yeah man. proper like get you into the mood like i'm gonna i'm a badass i'm gonna beat this boss i'm so. here all day. <laughs> that that's part of the reason why i love celeste so much is that soundtrack oh, is the soundtrack good. so good yeah i would 100 percent. it's on apple music uh, I'm, I should actually see Furies. Is Furies is also on there. Is it? Okay. Mm. So I, I, Well, I'm on Google Play, but it should be on Yeah, Apple, usually yeah. when things come to Google Play and Apple Music, they're the same. same. I know Spotify is pretty good with getting things early, which thankfully we're getting in Slack. getting code. Spotify. Yeah, yeah, hooray. But sorry, you can't just assume everything's on both because to give you an example, I love Ori in the Blind Forest. Mm. And you can't get the soundtrack on Google Play. Is it on Apple? Believe it or not, it is on Apple Play. Oh, as as really? <laughs> Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, because that's also a really good so soundtrack. Bleak. Yeah, I know. I love that soundtrack. It makes me sad when um. I need to make the jump to Apple. It makes me sad when I I Google 
you know, because I, I, I try listen to soundtracks on legitimate platforms. I mean, I'm paying for Apple Music, mm. so I don't feel, but I hate when I go to YouTube and that's the only way to listen to a soundtrack because someone else is profiteering off, you know, mm. the composer's work. Um, but when it comes to like Persona soundtracks, which I absolutely adore, they're all on Apple Music and Google Play in the States, but not here. Oh, not here. And I'm just like, well, thanks yeah and if you want to buy it it's like 50 dollars uh, it's like i love the soundtrack but that's a lot, is a lot of money yeah it's a sure. lot of money um but yeah i more and more and more soundtracks are coming to apple music and google play and mm. most of them are on spotify so i hope that when spotify launches here this month we will get access to a mm. lot of that so give that a i'm keen to give fury a bash i know it's on i think it's like you 200 might, bucks on have, switch or something yeah i think it is 260 on switch um, but you might have picked it up on PS Plus a few months ago. I think it was available. Oh, I don't know if you might have missed it. I was it. so bad with redeeming games at one <laughs> point. Like, I was forgetting months at a time that oh, I... No. Yeah, so maybe I can check on PS4. Mm. But it also just sounds like the kind it's, of game that I want game on, on Switch. Switch yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's five hours long, about 10, 10 bosses. 10, it's 10 to 12. I just can't remember from the mm-hmm. top of my head. It'll take you about 20 to 30 minutes to work your way through each of them. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, that's on Switch. I'm, I'm <laughs> that's stoked. where I played it. <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked to give... I picked up, um, you know, Mike Bithell, who mm-hmm. made uh, Thomas Was Alone mm-hmm. and uh, Volume. He released a game a few months back um, called Subsurface Circular. Mm-hmm. It was like a surprise release. They um, they kind of worked really on the game was. for like four or five months and was just like a... They dropped it. Yeah, they just put it on Steam. It was super cheap. It was like 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, but it's come out on Switch now. Interesting. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, and at the same time that uh, Nintendo uh, implemented their gold coin policy. Oh, yeah. So now all the gold coins that you get, uh, you earn gold coins from purchasing games, you get a percentage mm-hmm. back. And just stuff, if you were playing on the 3DS or, you know, Wii, you probably have a good collection of coins. Mm. So now you can use uh, gold coins as discounts on games oh, wow. in the Switch shop. So I got like, 50 bucks off subsurface sur- subsurface circular yeah <laughs> uh, subsurface circular so it was like i think 30 bucks in the end um Go and as far as i can tell that money still goes to the devs so it's not like oh, you're cool. cheating them out of that mm. um but yeah apparently it's like a two-hour game i haven't tried it yet like a two-hour experience That's it's a really though. good story and perfect on the it's switch mark Bethel, man yeah what, mike, what a mike Bethel's a good, <laughs> good dude a him oak. and his studio make really good stuff yeah. so I'm, I'm keen to see what they work on next because yeah. Thomas was alone is still one of the coolest platforms oh, I out love there. That game. Yeah. Mm. Got, got to get them so square good. plushies, man. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. When, when are they lo- launching that Thomas plushie? That, that game <laughs> has been on like every platform. I know. Possible. That's literally it's been on It's probably on like your, your smart fridge and smart toaster it's on if your you watch. want it to be. Oh, it's oh, on wait, your sorry. Watch. On your printer. Yeah. It's on, it's on your printer. <laughs> it's, it's, on, it's actually on your analog watch. You can play nice. with the dials. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. It's supported by Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> get out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a. I'm, I'm glad that we're keeping up with uh, the happenings in games. But one of the requests that we did get was to kind of just brush through some games that were coming out in the uh, coming week. Um, and I don't think there's much coming out next week. Uh, particularly no, I think we're still in a quietish yeah it's, I need to double check so firstly uh, Cube the game that I can't really speak much about is coming out next week it's uh, out on Tuesday uh, March 13th which is the same day that all the reviews will drop um, and it's on PS4 Xbox and PC I might be wrong about Xbox uh, <laughs> we uh, can confirm yeah, we can confirm I know that the end of March is super busy uh, yeah, because it's when... <laughs> the financial year end uh, for most companies mm. so they try and get their stuff out before you know the start of the new financial year so I'm just hold on, I just, just brought just up scrolling. A, a, a list here okay. can we be very prepared on so, this podcast yes, super <laughs> so according to this very handy list on GameSpot <laughs> nice <is good>. um, <laughs> good plug uh, did we, it say seamlessly so so seems <laughs> oh shit there's actually a lot coming out next week um wow so devil we, are, may we cry, are bad at this yeah we are bad. <laughs> devil may cry hd collection is coming out on march 13th which is next tuesday nice. as well uh, Not on that's Switch, just no, no, no that's just um devil may cry one two three four does it include four? I, oh, no. it four I might be wrong i don't know either way the it's games coming. you should play in that collection are the first one, which is a bit <laughs> janky as shit right now, but Devil May Cry 3 is sublime. It is Amazing. so good. 
It is. I mean, I love four so much, but three is two is fucking terrible. Just leave that game. Serious question: Would you unfriend me on Facebook if I told you I've never played Devil May Cry ever? No, mm, 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 <laughs> not really, because like I, I think it's one of those games that I don't think it's for everyone. Even though it's a very frantic, uh, like beat 'em up, whatever. Mm. I, I would unfriend you if you said you've never played Bayonetta. Which I've never played. <laughs> Why are we still friends? I know. <laughs> but uh, at least that's on Switch, so that's you know you can you can at least play that. Um, Fear Effect. Oh no, wait, that's March that's- 6th. But that's an old game that got remastered, wasn't it, or something like that? I have no idea. Fear of I'm not too sure. But uh, there's a game called Gollum Go. coming out for PSVR, which is okay. Okay, um, whatever that is. Yeah, oh. uh, PSVR. Oh, shit, I never got to talk about the terrible PSVR game I had to, I had to review last week. I what played that uh, uh, Bra- what? Bravo, Bravo Team, which is a mentioning this. exclusive made by the people who did Until Dawn. It's fucking terrible. Oh, Don't no. Just... Don't. Don't even go near that game. And that's that segment. It's horrible. <laughs> horrible game. Like, I have no idea why Sony was pushing that game's marketing so far. It is, it is like, it commits that's the bad. worst VR sins possible. Like, it's just fucking shit. Like, don't play that game. No, no. Don't don't waste your money on that game. <laughs> Buy Moss instead. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you don't know what Moss is, listen to episode one. Yes, because Moss is great. <laughs> There's a good plague. See, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> There's a PSV- PSVR game called Gollum coming out. Uh, I, s- I don't know anything about I'm that. I'm not too sure. I thought it was the, at first, I thought it was the Oculus Rift exclusive. Uh, that was kind of like Moss, um, but that's called Kronos, I think. So, I don't know. This looks like another third-person adventure thing, so I'm all down for that. Because yeah. that in VR is fucking fun. So, it's good. Then your favorite game. Pure Farming 2018. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> You've played That's some of the so Pure funny. Farming games, I haven't. Haven't, you? No, I haven't. Did you? I thought you reviewed one. <laughs> I play... No. So, let me let me just be clear. There are two big farming games. You okay. get Farming Simulator and then Pure Farming. <laughs> they're two... Oh, they're different. They're different, as far oh. as I know. Oh. Um, and I only know about Pure Farming because um portuguese and in the gaming industry apparently it's fun to tell portuguese people that they have to play farming games i mean we do grow cabbages we, we in do gardens, i know so. my cabbage patch is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> but yeah pure farming 2018 if you enjoy that sort of thing that is coming this week it's honestly i'm really i'm really not excited for it i'm just kidding <laughs> uh you can uh i mean you're excited for that other farming game stardew valley oh yeah that, so. that see that's farming done right yes okay yes. but yeah pure farming 2018 a little bit too serious in terms of farming mm. and you can't even marry people so oh god what no. is this nonsense do you even you get know? a cat or a dog no as a well, i don't know screw this game <laughs> moving on but the big release this Those week sweet. i just banged the table so i'm sure that went right through the, the <laughs> microphone that was a good good time Kirby Star, Star Allies. Allies. We are not Switch Aww. fanboys. So if you guys think we are, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. No. <laughs> we, I mean, we don't love the Switch. Not we at all. No, I actually Switch. hate my so Switch. Good. I threw no. them in the other day. Oh, my. Then I took it out because I you, love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we played this... We well, played, we the, played demo. the demo. We chatted about the demo last In week. episode one. As well, <laughs> you can go catch that if you want to listen to Moss and us just talk a bit about Kirby Star Allies. Yeah. Um, just to quickly touch on that... I think we, we mentioned that the demo is really cool, but we want to see how the full game is going to implement all these neat little combinations mm. that we saw in the demo. If there's so a lot of depth. How, how, how deep will the game be? Is it literally, in the first hour, you've seen every enemy and that's mm-hmm. that's all, I don't know, are they going to keep it fresh for however long the experience is? The demo, the demo was really, really cool. Really cool, yeah. Uh, it was really fun and just the whole spin on... Uh, being able to recruit three little pals who each have individual powers and then they can, you know, influence the current power that you have because Kirby's a heartless monster who absorbs enemies and eats them. And uh, throws out friends and recruits mm-hmm. them like it's nobody's business. Kirby so. was actually the original Majin Buu. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Sorry, I've got Dragon Ball Z on the brain because I've just been watching Super and Majin Buu just eats everything. everything. And he's, fucking and he's pink. Yeah, he's pink, Duh. exactly. He's, he, the only thing that Majin Buu can do that Kirby can't do is turn people into chocolate. But Kirby, um, Kirby doesn't have the... Cur- he do- he doesn't even care. He's so rude that he'll just eat you as you are. He won't turn you into a delightful chocolate first. Exactly. Fucking and, heartless yeah. asshole. What a dick. Yeah. Nintendo producing, <laughs> producing <laughs> asshole mascots. Yeah, they, they, sent, they sent this really bad video to Donald Trump about violence in video games, which we'll touch we'll on. We'll touch on that, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's all these freaking hardcore military shooters and whatever... Kirby's not one mention monster, of Kirby. Yeah. That's the real monster. <laughs> Nintendo's getting away with murder I here. I know what they were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, Kirby Stylus is 
going to be fun. Awesome, I think. yeah. yeah so Kirby f- games are always delightful. They never, they're not on the same level as like a Mario. I've no. never found, but they are super charming and just yeah. fun. They so. they just like that mid tier, yeah, Nintendo franchise. Yeah, in the so. same like vein as like um, Yoshi yeah. and Donkey Kong in a way, mm. sort of. I think mm. he gets shafted a little bit, but he yeah. does. But Kirby, yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's your it, March yeah. Switch exclusive, and uh, there's a bunch of stuff coming out the week after. after but yeah, we'll chat so you're about not that. Touch on that. Yeah, the, oh, like, like I said, the end of March oh. is crazy. It is a lot of huge games coming up, but we'll chat about yeah. that next week. Um, yeah. So, have you seen anything news-wise this week that has kind of caught your interest? I mean, aside from the really stupid Blizzard uh, Switch tease. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. But we, no, that but, was this week. The, wait, the, the, we, the tweet was this week. The rumor was last week. I feel like was we spoke it? about it. No, we spoke about Did it. Did we speak about yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, maybe what we didn't <laughs> speak about was Blizzard coming out and saying, oh, it was it was a harmless tweet. It didn't mean anything. Bullshit. Yeah, no. Uh, we, we know it's coming. No. You can't fool us. There's no, there's no way someone tweeted that out and wasn't like, oh, shit, I didn't realize there was rumors mm. about Switch. Well, uh, that, the, the only thing, and I'm so sorry to do this because whoever listened to episode one, where we went on and on about the Switch because it's the Switch's first birthday. <laughs> in episode two today, yes. what happened this week? Um, Great Nintendo, Nintendo had, direct. A, had a direct. Okay, and yes. we, I'm sorry to say we can't not mention it. So no. please, please don't be chased away <laughs> thinking we're just Switch fanboys. We are. I'm not denying that. No, but, but this but isn't a Switch we're not, podcast. It's not a Switch podcast. It just happens that two weeks in a row there's big Switch news. So we can't ignore it. Um, yeah, man. That, if you're angry at that, ask why uh, Sony and Microsoft don't have news yeah, every well, week. Why That's don't they exciting. have direct? Yeah, exactly. Why don't they? And, Where, where's my Sony direct? And, and besides, um, we, we're doing segments. so <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you don't like the Switch segment, you're very welcome to skip it. <laughs> but the, just, the, Switch, the direct yeah. was crazy. Oh, my gosh. Just so good. I didn't actually watch it live because it was at stupid o'clock here. Um, it was just... I think it was at midnight here, so... Yeah, I was, just I was like, nah. sleeping. I'm an yeah, old man. I'm, I'm sleeping. We have jobs in the morning and stuff, but you caught up with it. Ah, I woke up the next morning, sat through Twitter. my traffic and work. No, no, didn't, didn't touch Twitter. Oh, really? Uh, went, went to traffic, uh, drove through through all the traffic to work, sat down, it was a bit early. Then I opened up Twitter and I was like, oh, making like silent squealing noises. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> so obviously your big thing is Smash. Oh, man. See, there's a lot that came out, but yeah, I think I think just that Smash, we knew it was coming, okay? Okay, yeah, the, Super Smash. Can we, on can we just? We just. We're not surprised that it, it's no, happening. We're just no. happy that we've got a date now. It says 2018, mm-hmm. um, and we we've mentioned this that Nintendo are just so they haven't. I don't want to jinx it, but they haven't pushed anything out. Mm-mm. Okay, so they, they've met all their dates in 2018. Even if it comes out of the 31st of December, I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's coming this year. Yeah, they're really good with that, and they they've adopted this kind of thing that Bethesda started a few years back, where they're and out they're distance between announcement and release is so small yeah. like mario came out the same year it was announced uh, kirby was announced at last year's e3 it's, it's out yeah, next now, week yeah. um so i mean we're in we're in march now they've got nine months i mean yeah. Yeah, and it won't be that late i mean i'm I, we think it's sure september september yeah. yeah with with the online service i mean yeah. why would they how well why wouldn't they launch it at that it's mm. the perfect game to launch with so that's the that's the prevailing theory <sighs> everyone was man. like they have to announce smash because they specifically said they're going to launch their service with a game. Exactly. Um, and like, what other game <laughs> in the got friggin' Nintendo other... library takes use of online as much as Smash? You never know. Maybe they'll, they'll <laughs> surprise us with some other game. But Mario Kart 9. Doubt it. Mario, Mario Kart 9, sure, imagine. <laughs> but um, did you watch the trailer? For, for this? this? Yes. Oh, yeah. It Very was cool. so cool. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I'm more, I'm more appreciate the fact that it, it spawned a meme when. Oh god! Yeah, the, the inkling in the when, eye. Yeah, meme. when the little when the inkling had the reflection, I was like, that is gonna be a meme. Yeah, hundred percent. It is a meme. People are just photoshopping whatever the hole they want. But it also seemed very dire. Like, oh, they oh, were yeah, just having a, a, a yeah. innocent paint battle. Now it's like, oh, the whole of Nintendo is here to fuck you up. Yeah. So, just I don't know if any, if you guys haven't seen the video. It's two inklings from Splatoon battling it yeah. out. Then neat, the one- neat fact, though, because I saw it on Twitter, their little ink backpacks yeah. that, you know, in the game that shows your ammo mm-hmm. currently, in the in this trailer, as they're fighting, the level of ink on that tank is actually Going slowly decreased. Matt. Just little touches. <laughs> Matt. Holy crap. <laughs> Nintendo aren't fucking around. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> They've got the levels on the backpacks just right. Just right. <laughs> so they're busy battling it out, and then... 
I don't know what happens to the one. The one disappears. Oh yeah, it just kind of like gets dark. And then there's this huge shadow that happens or I don't know, just goes dark, whatever. Mm -hmm. The one inkling turns around and reflected in her eye is the the Smash Smash logo. logo. And that's when people lose their shit. This is at this point in the office. I knew, I knew that, I mean, I'm on Twitter. It's like, here's the Smash reveal video. So obviously I know it's Smash, Mm. but still that moment when she turns around, just reflection, I'm like making silent screaming noise. It's It's so good. Smash. I I watched the the reaction video of. (laughs) Uh, In New York. In New York. York. Yeah, yeah. The Nintendo shop in New York. The one dude passed out. Did he pass out? If if you skip to the end, it looks like there's someone fanning the dude. (laughs) (laughs) Like that, that, that's like a little over the top, but. I can feel the hype. Oh man, the <laughs> hype, man. When that logo just pops up on the eye, there's just it's people have been begging for this cool. to happen. Yeah. So, do you do you know what the significance of the logo is? Because I have no idea. Um, I have no idea because myself. It, I'm not that like a hard weird... a fan, but yeah, I, I just know it's the logo. <laughs> it's the Smash logo. Yeah. yeah. So when when the the logo appears, then you just see the silhouette of Mario, and, and then, it looks uh, like Breath of the Wild Link. Breath of the Link. Yeah, Breath yeah. of the Wild Link. Uh, but so we know it's coming okay yeah. um a lot of a lot of people are debating is it a um a, a new port? game yeah. is it a port i don't i, wonder. I, don't, I don't i don't think it's a new game to be completely honest mm. i don't see mm. why they'd make a new game and we've had mario kart h which shows that they're very comfortable just repackaging a deluxe edition yeah. tightening the whole up. bunch of content yeah, they'll, they'll tweak it so to be honest it doesn't matter whether they call it super smash six or seven, well, it was, whatever it was melee then super smash we then super, i think i think, I think it's number f- five i think it's five yeah. please don't shoot us smash fans I especially the five. one who passed out in new york yeah okay, <laughs> yeah because it was smash smash 64 i, I, don't, I don't know i think okay, it's five. We, we're not gonna botch it okay? i think it's but five point is i i don't think it really matters what number it is the point is it's coming to the switch <laughs> um I, I honestly don't think it'll build. It'll, it'll be built from the ground up. Mm-hmm. I mean, why would it be smashed? The, the core smashed designer the... already made it very clear that he does not want <laughs> he's to not, work yeah, this he's anymore. Not. Um, so I'm, I'm, I honestly feel that it's going to be just a port, inverted mm-hmm. commas port, in the sense that they just move it over, but they're going to bundle in a whole lot of new content. So I do wonder what they'll call it though, because like Mario Kart 8 it. Deluxe was a port, yeah, but then Splatoon 2. A lot of people gave it shit because they're like, this is a port packaged as a sequel, which I don't agree with because there's a lot of new, new stuff, iterations yeah. and stuff, but there's a lot of DNA from the first one that's there. So. Yeah, I mean, and that'll carry over. So I think in the trailer it says working title, or I read somewhere, I don't know if I was yeah. where I saw it, but yeah. it's like working title. So yeah, I'm sure they'll add, a, they'll add Switch on the end or yeah, something. Exactly. Um, but I think what we should be excited for is the fact that it's coming and there are new characters coming. I mean, they announced it with the Inklings, which yeah. is... Duh. So there's going to okay, be Splatoon. Things. There's going to be little Splatoon characters in there, which is new. They they which weren't is new. In, no, they weren't. They weren't in, as DLC Wii, characters or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one thing I saw, I don't know where the screenshot came from, and I don't know how accurate this is. But on Twitter, I saw um, a screenshot of the the Smash logo with silhouettes of lot a lot more characters. Oh, okay, I um, see that. And someone said there's an arms character is the one silhouette, which that makes would make th- sense. Yeah, yeah, which makes you think whether it's a port or not. We're going to get a whole lot of, new, lot of new characters, um, yeah. Nintendo characters. I mean, and there's no telling what other characters Nintendo are going to throw in. I mean, we've had Solid Snake for crying out loud. We've had uh-huh. Sonic. We've had Cloud. Had we've had Bayonetta. like we've had. I think we've had we've had Bayonetta. We've had Ryu from yeah Ryu Street from Fighter. Street Fighter. Yeah, so, fucking Pac Man. Exactly. And the thing is, I played um, the last Smash on 3DS and Wii U, both really, 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 really good. Surprisingly, the reason I got into the 3DS was, was uh, we went to, I think it was lunch one day, and you had brought your 3DS. I was, I knew and I was like, oh, I, I need to try Smash. Mm. And I was hooked. Yeah, like, it's, it's Also, really I got cool. to play as Kirby, who's the best exactly. character. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. Still my favorite character exactly. in that whole game. So, But yeah, I played a bunch in 3DS, and it's really... It's so it's think, a multiplayer-focused game, for sure. Exactly. There's no single-player no, no. I mean, like that. the thing is... You say that it's better multiplayer, but there's a ton of single player content. There's stuff you there. can do, yeah. I you, mean, can, if, you can play you, the arcade mode. If you if you are the person who wants to get the trophies, there, there's tons yeah. to do. You can pour in like dozens and dozens mm-hmm. of hours unlocking mm-hmm. all of them. Um, but what I was getting at, I think, is that the Wii U version was great, okay? Mm-hmm. But the Wii U didn't have the install base that Nintendo would have hoped for. So the game was like, squandered let's say and on 3ds mm. I, oh, I don't want to say it, it bombed i don't think it bombed i think it I sold think so, well yeah. both it was sold well on both consoles but it's coming to switch now yeah which is this massive install base and it, i don't know it's just exciting to think they've got this platform now and if they have this like premium i'll say premium luck like, because it's the latest in the series so hopefully the best 
smash iteration ever mm. they're gonna have this game on the switch and it's just gonna be enjoyed by a lot more people who've maybe never played it before a lot of brand new smash players exactly yeah, yeah. And, yeah. i mean and it's a switch for crying out loud imagine playing eight player smash not on a tiny screen god no because yeah, it'll be Flipping too hell no. too hectic but it is the perfect game to play multiplayer yeah. anyway so let's say you with four of your mates whatever she's like pop out your switch have some smash fun that's when it excels so the it's it's a multiplayer game you can play single player but it definitely shines when you know, at a party or something, a bra, whatever you want to call it, and you're sitting with your friends and you're just enjoying the shit out of yeah. it, beating the shit out of each other as well. I feel like it's the same with uh, Mario Kart. We, we, oh, yeah. We've gone out to dinner before with friends and just like, yeah, propped pop, up pop these up. Mario Kart <laughs> games. Like, But Smash, I think, has this... Everyone thinks it's this really hardcore fighter, um, which I think is kind of funny because I don't think Nintendo ever thought that it would become that. Like, it yeah, was always meant as a party mode fighter, exactly, yeah. you know, and it's just got this really strong fighting game following. But mm. if you're just looking to play, I think if you put this up against this, the likes of Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or whatever, Smash is 100% easier to get into mm. and easier to just kind of like screw around and have fun because all the stages are different. They all have these power ups mm. and stuff. You can. Is just super fun, yeah, but so there, I'm excited. There, there are intricacies, though. I mean, so yeah. Oh very, yeah, if you want to be very, hectic, yeah, yeah, very easy to pick up. But a lot of people, I don't know. I suppose that's a point to talk about because a lot of people say they play Smash. I mean, we've got friends who say they don't get the pill Smash because they don't know what the hell's going on, mm. which is completely understandable. You're on the arena and there's just the so much happening. Yeah. I mean, and with the Wii U version, they introduced eight player Smash, which is just oh, God, no. It is chaotic. I played. I never played eight player. I think I played six or seven player Smash with friends. Jeez. It is just madness because it does even become a thing of fighting anyone it's about surviving <laughs> i've only ever done so much four player on. smash i can't imagine so eight it's is. intense yeah so i mean smash is easy to pick up but i think there is a level of intricacy and i'm hoping that the newcomers to the series aren't chased away because there really is a great game there if you yeah. learn how the arenas work how, the thing is one of one way you lose in smash is you get hit off the stage i mean that's yeah. how you die yeah, okay? yeah. whether you be like being send skyward or falling off the platform whatever yeah damage uh, increments that percent exactly yeah, yeah. The, but when you play characters each character has a move that gives them like a little jump up so you can do a double jump and still do a move that gives you a bit of heart mm. people just need to learn things like little tricks like that so if you get hit off the stage you can double jump and still do a move to get heart to like grab onto the ledge things like that people must just learn and or just play just, kirby who can fly or just play kirby who's got that cute cute although he does still have an up move as well to give him yeah. extra art every but the thing does. is his up move is that sort thing that immediately oh, comes you down can so screw you can just yourself. kill yourself yeah. yeah but he just absorbs air and floats he's a good exactly. time exactly yeah we can all agree kirby's the best yeah kirby's the best yeah. although we did say he's a little shit <laughs> <laughs> um, bouncing, yeah yeah, but yeah. yeah, enough about Smash. That's yeah, coming. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have Sometime more about it. At E3. Yeah, I think at E3. Yeah, Not the uh, the sense. other big announcement and what they kind of focused on mostly in the direct was uh, Mario Tennis Aces, which is the I've never played. tennis game that they announced at the last direct. I've never played a Mario tennis game, but I'm all for arcade tennis games because they're just fun. Yeah, like a like tennis. I mean, I played a shit ton of Wii tennis. Yes. So. <laughs> It is fun. It is a lot of fun. I mean, literally, I mean, you could do some, believe it or not, there were some trick shots involved. I don't think many people figured that out. (laughs) It wasn't. (laughs) No, it really was. I figured out because I played a shit ton with my brother Mm. that you could do like curve shots and this and that. So there was like still a a simple moveset, but like there's still a level of depth. Was this the one with the Wiimotes? Yeah, with the Wiimotes. Sorry, yeah. (laughs) I've never played the Super Mario one. (laughs) The point is, even a simple game like that, simple tennis game like that was really fun. Yeah, tennis games Um, are... And and I I mean, I didn't watch all of the the footage from the Direct, but I I would assume that given the Joy-Cons have uh, motion capabilities, oh, yeah. you can They'll play it with the Joy-Con like that. But what's cool <laughs> about it is that it's it's very much got like Mario DNA where uh, you have power-ups in each match that can give you like a powerful shot or a specific ability and stuff like that. And then there's a there's a story mode as well. No. Uh, I saw Mario playing tennis <laughs> against a piranha plant, which is kind of cool. Neat. Yeah. Um, I know what the law behind that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ma- yeah, Mario Tennis Aces just looks like a really fun time. And... It was announced at the, was it January or February Direct, the last one? I don't know. It was announced there and now it's got a release date of the 22nd of June. So it's like, cool, six month turnover, rad. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So yeah, that's coming out. I know you're very excited for Octopath Traveler. Yes. So did you play the demo at all? I did a little bit. Um, I played it when I was very tired, so I didn't give it 
the you attention monster. it needed. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's got a really rousing art style. That art style. I mean, I watched the trailer and I was sold because it's it's funny. I don't think you've played Final Fantasy VI either. No, I've only played seven. Okay, yeah. so seven wins the series. Okay, sorry, just to to um, give some clarity, Octopath Traveler is not a Final Fantasy game, no. but it's made by Square Enix, and it very much reminds me of Final Fantasy VI, which is. It was the last probably, SNES game. Yeah, yeah. Probably people would argue the pinnacle of the series because it really was a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason I see the, the similarities just in the, the, the art style, the pixels. Um, but Octopath Traveler sort of taken that style and given it like a really unique, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, yeah, it's 3D. It's, there's, there's a layer of depth there. Yeah, it almost, so, it almost looks like your characters are flat. It reminds me like a lot a, of like a, Paper Mario. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like flat, but the world's not super flat. But it, it's gorgeous. Like I've never, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if, a, I don't want to like short, sell anyone short, but I don't know if I've ever seen a game like that. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, no, it, it is striking. It's, in it's really, really beautiful. And I mean, just the soundtrack alone. If yeah, you, if you just watch the trailer, you listen to the sound, you're like, wow, this game's, I haven't even played it and it, it looks like it's going to be great. You mm-hmm. know, and it, it looks and sounds great. So hopefully it, it plays great. And I played the demo um, and it, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so the, the demo came out, I don't it know. It came out very things. early. Yeah, it came like out last year sometime. Last year sometime. So yeah. we knew the game was coming. For some reason, I had a feeling it was coming in February, March. I don't know where I got that information from. Might have been mm-hmm. black card drunk. Okay. <laughs> um, but the fact that now it's it's got a release date, I think it's july July sometime. 13th. So it's not yes. that far. No, not at all. And I mean, I love Square Enix RPGs. And to have one of those on the Switch. On the I mean, go. you've got you've got I Am Setsuna, which I still need to play as well. But I don't know. That, that, that's a game I'm like, I've seen it. I should play it. But I've never been inclined to play it in the same way that Octopath Travel. I look at it, I'm like, shit, I really can't wait mm. to play it. Because like I said, it makes me think of Final Fantasy VI, which to me is like one of my favorites. Pro- probably the, my favorite in the whole franchise i know you you uh, 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 given uh, on the day it's either six or nine i know uh, i alternate because they're both really good but six if you haven't played it it's really really good and octopath traveler just it looks like it's that sort of style taken to like modern platforms okay with so, mod- modern sensibilities mo- yeah modern yeah. yeah okay i'm 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 excited to um to replay the demo and give it another go because it's not my go-to game but mm. um Considering everyone loves Final Fantasy VI and the oh, comparisons so being made to this one, <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Uh, so we can just quickly fire through the rest of this direct. Um, Splatoon. Splatoon Two is getting some new DLC. DLC? Yeah, in April. For that. Yeah, yeah, in April it's getting its 3.0 update. This is something Nintendo is really good with is post-launch support for their online games. Splatoon should be a benchmark that so many other games look to because it's got so much free content. Uh, just regularly like mm. new weapons new maps new modes there's always a splat fest so 3.0 is bringing like 100 new pieces of gear oh, geez. um it's bringing new maps uh it's bringing new ranks for online play so that's and that's all free uh the expansion is going to be 20 dollars. it's going to expand on the single player so it gives you a whole new single player oh, campaign cool. and the single player campaign is something i feel like people sleep on because like it's so different to the multiplayer it's more splatoon 2 single player is like a a portalization of Splatoon. It is mm. puzzle centric and uses its mechanics in very neat puzzle ways. So I'm keen to see that. Um, Dark Souls Remastered Dark Souls. is mm. getting a network test soon. And an amiibo. Yes. Praise, praise the sun. <laughs> praise the sun in little plastic form. Oh, I was man. actually saying at work, we should try by three and put Kirby in the middle. So it was just praise, <laughs> praise the Kirby. The Kirby. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's getting an amiibo. It's one of those third party amiibos. So it might be tricky to get in South Africa because oh, no. we don't get those. Uh, like we never got the shovel knight one (laughs) which was really sad yeah Yeah. but it's getting a network test sometime soon and it's launching in may on may 25th so soon uh then a bunch of uh other games uh got announced for switch the biggest of which i think is captain toad treasure tracker which was a wii u game never played it but i heard it's amazing very very good game uh, Switch giving life to these Wii U games yeah. that just went. I mean, all, but that's the thing. That's why everyone thinks these all these new games is because they existed on a platform that no one played, mm. and like that's why we get like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and uh, Treasure Tracker, and I hope to God we get things like Wind Waker HD. And, oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, It'll come. Oh, Wind Waker. Nintendo, on the go. Oh. <laughs> um, calm down, calm down. <laughs> but it's uh, Treasure Tracker is getting some new levels from Mario Odyssey. Oops. Um, 
and stuff like that. But it's just a good game. Um, other highlights are Okami. Okami HD. Actually, I never, I never played it, but it seems like the sort of game that I would love. I actually do own it on on the Wii. Oh, okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, okay. yeah. Uh, I played about an hour. I, I don't know why. I just never got into it. But based on that art style and all the good sentiments I've heard about the game, it seems like something I should play. So I don't know. I'll keep an eye for it you on get the to Switch. Play as a good doggo. I know. The doggo who can draw and shit. Yeah. So. <laughs> From what I've heard, because I also haven't played it, um, it's very much like Zelda. Mm. So that's cool. But I've also heard it's really long. Sold. Those yeah. are really long. Really, Unsold. Really long. Yeah. <laughs> so it came, the HD one came out last year on other consoles. And I was like, oh man, I wish this was on Switch. Switch. So no, it is. super happy that it's coming. Oh, um, I'll see what else I want on that list. Undertale? No. No? Oh, well, yeah. that's coming one day. Crash. Literally, that's what they said. One, oh, one day. One day. Yeah, one oh, day. boy. Um, Crash Bandicoot's Insane Trilogy. Yes, so this is the big news. Crash Bandicoot's Insane Trilogy was a remake of the very first three games, which previously you could only get on Sony platforms. Mm. That's and now done. It's done. Yeah. It's, Sony mascot is available on everything else. Yeah, it's coming to PC, Xbox One, and Switch uh, in July. And your printer. No, I'm kidding. And your printer, yes. <laughs> no, it's not. Please don't try to download it on your HP. It's, it's a really good remake. I was playing oh, I a bunch of it during Christmas. So really I, good. I saw the remake and not to be that Switch fan, but I was like, this this better come to Switch and then I'll play it. And it's coming to Switch, so oh. I'm excited. Uh, uh, confession, I didn't play much of Crash 1 and 2, uh, but I played a shit ton of Crash 3. I think I, everyone has, yeah. I, I never owned it. A cousin of mine owned it. Yeah. And every time we visited him, that's all we did was we played Crash 3. So I have very fond memories of riding the little tiger on the, the Great Wall. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Those, those cool levels. Yeah, yeah. so I'd, I'd like, I just think about that stuff. I'm like, oh my God, having that on the Switch remade. Well, on Crash 2, in. it's not a tiger, it's a polar bear. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have this, because um, I never owned a PS1 or PS2. We, we should really do an episode on like our gaming yeah, history. Yeah, sure. um, But just as a small anecdote. Uh, it's a patron exclusive. For- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Five dollar level. <laughs> <laughs> um, when my very first trip uh, to Germany, my dad used to go there a lot because he works uh, for a German company. So he used to go there a bunch. And when I was in uh, primary school, the one year he was able to take us for a week there, and it was like cool. He wanted to show us around Germany, whatever. We we ended up uh, renting a PS One at a local oh, no. video store <laughs> because I never owned a PS One. And I played a week's worth of just Crash Bandicoot 3 <laughs> instead of visiting this new country. <laughs> how so, is Germany? I don't know. I, don't I know, can tell I you how it crashes. <laughs> it's good. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. That's I'm, a cool story, though. I'm that's, super that's why fond, you're so of fond of Crash 3. Series, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fond of Crash. I 100% can see why people like Mario is better. I don't give a shit. Crash yeah, is you, super fun. You have that, that little slice of yeah. memory that is unique to you, and that's why you appreciate yeah, it more. And I think uh, Crash 2 especially is very good. Crash mm. 1... Yeah. 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 but 2 and 3 are super good so people should play that um, other games coming Little Nightmares is coming on May 18th it's a very good game apparently um, South, Park. South Park Fractured But Whole coming on April 24th mm. no. I work. like the first one I'm, yeah. I wasn't too drawn to this one mm. uh, Hyrule Warriors, Warriors which came I, out also on Wii U I hear and about 3DS. this game all the time and I have I've no idea what it is it's like a Dynasty Warriors <laughs> game so. I have no idea what Dynasty Warriors <laughs> So this means nothing to I me. I mean, all I know is that there's a bunch of enemies and you just like uh, fighting okay, them in I, like, I know exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. that was the that, Zelda skin. Yeah, basically. yeah. So nice. Zelda, you can play Linkle, you can play Tingle if you really want. Uh, what? Um, yeah, what? <laughs> uh, and then a bunch of 3DS games as well, which Surprise. is really surprising. The biggest of which is a Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion, Mansion remake. Oh, yeah, Which I've never played. I've never played Luigi's Mansion either. Two Shame came out on the 3DS. Yeah. But now they're remaking the first one. The first one. And And then they're going to... Then they're going to remake them both and put them on the Switch. Switch, exactly. Um, Yeah, it's funny. I haven't haven't touched my 3DS for so long. I haven't. But I mean, look, I I love the 3DS, but... I don't know how, how do you play 3ds when you've got a Switch? exactly it's such a hard yeah, prospect. It's, yeah, it's Although to I did, I did out of uh, I think after I finished Breath of the Wild, I was like, man, I'm on this Zelda train. I need to play it again, and I started up a new game of Majora's Mask on 3ds. Oh, uh, and you fuck that game's good. <sighs> oh my god, play Majora's Mask, everyone. <laughs> um, I play more of the older Zelda games. Other big ones. There's a new game Detective. called Bowser's Inside oh, Story. Never mind. But Detective <laughs> Pikachu. That is the one that I give zero shits. Have you seen that amiibo though? <laughs> is that amiibo? It's Huge. It's like it's like take the normal Pikachu amiibo and put four on top, and that's the height that- of the new one. It's huge. Wait, there's a size comparison. I have to show you. Okay. Okay. This is a good time to talk about our non-sponsor. 
are not sponsored. <laughs> we yes, don't have. We have no sponsors. Please like, sponsor us we, so uh, we can fill these awkward gaps. <laughs> with, nah. We can nah. sell you something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, imagine Blue Apron existed here. So Yeah. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh my God, it's huge. It's huge. Jeez, like, Compared to the normal one. It's like Pikachu's father, man. <laughs> Holy shit. But, it's, P- it's Pikachu's dad slash mom. Yeah, exactly. Amoeba. <laughs> It's when Pikachu just went on that binge Super eating. Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Detective Pikachu is like this adventure game, as far as I can tell. Um, Pikachu talks, which is very unsettling. What? Yeah, very, very unsettling. And by talk, you mean it's Pika? Pika? No, no, it's normal. I mean, they're making a movie and Ryan Reynolds is going to be the voice. <laughs> okay. Deadpool is going to voice the Pikachu. Hell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's... I can't, I can't even visualize it. That's just mind-boggling. So weird. You're taking this character who's been around for... She's like two three decades now. yeah pikachu's yeah. ancient and now just talking literally like- the the extent of pikachu's dialogue is pika pika or pikachu so giving it a voice now is just the hell <laughs> but meowth could always talk meowth could always talk because meowth was a cat and cats yeah. are the best uh, well better than a, <laughs> well i guess pikachu is just an electric rodent exactly I guess, so uh some other quick fine news because we are very like i looked through when we were talking about our games and I was like, man, how are we going to fill an hour and a half? And now we've got like we five got, minutes. We've got five minutes to squeeze in. <laughs> so quick news. Other stuff. Fortnite Battle Royale coming to mobile. mobile. Yay, nay. Uh, I still got to play it on PS4 and PC. So you should join. I, I've been playing I, a bit look, of it this week. It's good. Yeah. I, don't, don't get me wrong. I think it's really good. I've just been hooked on PUBG mm. and I just need It's very to, different. Yeah. The, the sort of tension that you get in PUBG does not it's exist. It's different. Yeah. Fortnite, no, yeah. a lot of my colleagues at work play it and, they very they tell me very often I should join them fun. and I, I look enthusiastic say sure sure I'll join you and I just yeah. never get get around to it. I got an umbrella this week which means <laughs> nice. I got my first win. So now oh wait you can you can hover now can't you? I've seen videos. Yeah yeah yeah. Shows. So yeah. so whenever you jump out the plane you either get a like a I don't know it looks like a paraglider with jets on it. But Jeez now if like, you win a game you can replace it with an umbrella so everyone oh, cool. knows you're better than them. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what the game's. But about. I'm pretty sure everyone's got a friggin' win by now. Let's be honest. Oh man. Um, hmm, okay, Crash <laughs> Bandicoot. Is, oh, oh yeah, Call of Duty. <laughs> Blops. Roman numeral four. I I I I I I. What, what would Final well, Fantasy be in this in this font? Final Fantasy <laughs> fifteen. I I I I I I. No. Oh yeah. Wait. No, yeah, that's that, not correct. No, that's not right. It'll be RV. Yes. Yeah. So I only just it only dawned on me now because it's what? like, why is everyone bitching about it? I was like, oh, because don't get me wrong, it looks wrong. I always knew. I was like, wrong. I was like, what? You don't think it looks wrong? No, no, no it looks wrong. It looks hundred percent. So I was just like, why is everyone bitching about it? Only now it dawned on me, like, because you said Final Fantasy, what it looked like for. I was like, it'll be an RV. Hang on, Call of Duty have ruined it. Yeah, they just created their own friggin' Roman numeral. What the? F- yeah. Well, no. <laughs> Um, it goes. I think we spoke yeah. about I think we the rumors it, about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Ops One and Two are really good. Black, Black Ops Three Ops is shit not good, from what I've heard. Yeah. Never played it, so don't so know. I'm hoping it gets back on track because yeah, Blobs but One is real good. What's, what's interesting is that it doesn't normally come in October, does it? Yes, that's weird. It comes yeah. in November. November, I think. yeah. They've moved it so, a whole month forward. <laughs> I don't know what the thinking is, but. There's obviously there must be some strategic Red thinking Dead around Redemption. That. Oh, is that in November? Yeah. Okay, I, that, no, they, that makes they perfect moved sense. It till the end of the year, and I'm almost certain because everyone talks, but, you know, yeah. and I'm sure they want to avoid that. Thing oh 100%. no, definitely. <laughs> you know, and Rockstar controls so hard now. They're like, cool, Blops is coming <laughs> October the twelfth. Well, so is Red Dead Redemption, and then Blops <laughs> are going to be like. Well, we're moving back to November now, and then yeah. Rockstar can just as easily be like, actually, I we're wanna, delaying again. I, I want to see what this does to, because October has always been EA's Battlefront or Battlefield, whatever. Yeah, they the always come out two weeks or so before, before Call of Duty. Now Call of Duty is ahead of them. So oh, what God. do they do? Will they make it even do earlier? They do like September? Yeah, or I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be, but October, if you're a first-person <laughs> shooter fan... It's a good yeah. time. Oh, man. Shit, yeah, there's a was lot a of, There's week, a lot yeah. of news we didn't think about. I mean, yeah. the Division 2 Officially as well. announced. Um, um, is that coming? Do they have the, just announced No, it? they no, just said it's okay. coming and that they're going to reveal more at uh, E3. Yeah. Um, I'm stoked. Like, Division 1, whatever, it didn't deliver on a lot of the things that they initially promised and stuff. Mm, but but it, it. Yeah, it came out at the same time as, like, a destiny one sort of uh and it was the same sort of like shared world shooter experience and ubisoft worked on that game so so well 
as time progressed that right now, if you play the, the first division now, it's a great game. Mm. Like it is on, it's comparable to destiny Two. So I'm hoping that they don't do what Bungie did and just kind of forget everything that made the first one great. And you know, yeah. destiny two is a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> um, what? Get but <laughs> I'm super stoked for a division, division two that learns from the first one and to see what they kind of come up with. It's, mm. The first one was good. Uh, I never played it, but I, I know it's that story of it came out. It was it was like it was good, but not like amazing. And they've it just got better with time. Yeah. So hundred yeah, percent. See what they do with Division Two. Um, I don't know. Is that last is that bit of news? story? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's give a plug to this. So full disclosure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm friends with both the developers at Nyamakorp, which is a South African dev yeah. studio locally. Um, Shukia. And Ben both studied with me at Fitz University Game Design. Um, oh, damn. And they been... you rubbing shoulders all these yeah, famous people. <laughs> uh, they've been working on their first title called Semblance for a long time now. Um, I've watched it kind of go through the iterations. And uh, th- this week they announced that it's coming to PC and Switch this year. Uh, if rad. you don't know what Semblance is, it's it's a platformer first and foremost. But it kind of breaks the rules of traditional platforms where... Your world is sort of like a... Everyone calls it a Play-Doh world, which I think is a very good description. Mm. Um, You can kind of mess with the world around you. So the character whose name is Squish, I think, he can kind of indent (laughs) walls. So he can create like rivets where he can, you know, climb up a wall, Mm. uh, create his own ladder essentially. And uh, sometimes there'll be like lasers in the levels which you You have to bash bash the wall to block or redirect or stuff like that. Um, Mm. And then Squish himself can also change shape. He's like a little blob that blob. can yeah so it's really it's really good cool. it looks great um i'm super oh. happy it's coming to switch oh yeah i think it's the perfect platform god damn it, the switch is a perfect platform for everything yeah i think if we haven't made that clear yeah. then i don't know what, what podcast you've been listening to but yeah i, I saw this game it must have been rage 2015 or 2016 yeah. even then i really thought it looked Awesome. And it, it's so gone through it's a gone major through a ton, visual yeah. overhaul. Looking yeah. at the the screenshot now, and I watched the trailer earlier this week. It looks com- well, not completely different, but it, it looks yeah. You yeah. can see the polish and everything that's been that's gone into it, and mm. I'm glad that it's coming out. Mm. It's so, always so nice to see the local gaming scene getting yeah, you know, it's good traction and putting us out there. As yeah. far as I know, they'll be the first South African game on Switch. On the Switch, yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? It's yeah, very cool. I'm, you you I'm should excited. get in there quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Make a Switch game in a month. Like, actually, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked. Uh, I'm stoked for them just, you know, knowing them and, and seeing, you know, how long they've worked on this. And it's just cool seeing people I've studied with, you know, being written about in publications like Eurogamer and Rock mm. Paper Shotgun. It's, um, yeah, they've, they've it's actually, a legitimizing mm. thing. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked to play Semblance, but I'm more stoked to play it on Switch because I think it's going to be great on Switch. I, imagine they could do a thing where you just shake the Joy-Con and like if you shake it one direction, then your Squish like deforms in that direction. That'd oh, be that'd be cool. cool. <laughs> okay, you see, I got, I got to give idea. ideas. Hire yeah. hi this man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's um, most of the news. I We maybe should have given more time to the news. I totally forgot that this know. week was kind of crazy. Guys, we, we're learning. <laughs> <laughs> But, Next uh, time, maybe we'll pencil in some notes instead of being like. I mean, we yeah. we got ten minutes in of Smash news, and I'm exactly super happy yeah. about that. So yeah, this yeah. was a this was another great episode. I'm oh, really happy. I'm, I'm really sorry for my awkward pause earlier. I yeah. just went blank. <laughs> no, um, it happens. We've got a Twitter account up, uh, checkpoint chat. chat? Yes, mm-hmm. up on Twitter. Please, if you have any questions that you want us to kind of uh, talk through on the show. Uh, feel free to tweet at us feel free to email us on checkpoint chat podcast mm. at gmail.com right. you can do that at any time I mean, during it, the week it can be anything it doesn't have to be like did you see this gaming release yeah. i mean if you want it to be that don't get it wrong if you're like you saw this game release this week like just talk it can about be it anything we're very happy to do that or you can if you ask have, me to describe what maddie's wearing exactly yeah and how well, how my hair's looking and whatnot mm. that's fun mm. Um, I mean, ask, ask me about Alessandra's eyebrows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on fleek. <laughs> on fleek. Uh, um, but yeah, but just just message us, and uh, we'll be sharing all the stuff through Twitter. We've actually got two new platforms that we're pushing to now. I'll update the list. We are on Stitcher, which I was told is a very popular platform for podcasts on Android. Oh. Um, we're also on SoundCloud, although that might be tentative because no, of all the platforms yeah. we're using. SoundCloud wants to charge us a lot of money. 
but I know that a lot of people want it on SoundCloud. SoundCloud so yeah. if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, please let us know. Make it aware that you are listening on SoundCloud because if I see very few listeners, I'm not going to end up paying the mm. very abnormally high fee that they want. Um, but otherwise, you can catch us on Anchor, which I see a lot of people yeah, been doing. People been using. Uh, Apple Podcasts and. Um, all the big God, ones. Uh, think, Pocket uh, Casts, which you have to pay for, apparently. Apparently, a friend of mine asked, I was like, get on Pocket Casts. He's like, you have to pay for it. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing is that Anchor uh, has an RSS feed, which we've uh, given out. And you can uh, use that to subscribe to our podcast on uh, Podcast Addicts on Android, which mm. is free. Oh. Uh, yeah. And any sort of podcast app that you find that takes in RSS feeds, you can 100% just paste that f- uh, that link on there and it will just pull everything as soon as it goes live yeah. so there are options yeah. but if there are more <laughs> options that we aren't let covering us know. <laughs> let us know a lot of people did yeah. and I'm very grateful for the constructive feedback yeah, we've please been keep, keep the feedback coming and if you do like what you're listening to please do not be shy to give us a like or a yes. subscribe or a rating it really means a lot to us and it helps us reach other people who might be interested in yes. this podcast or this format or the subject matter yeah. you know yeah if you liked it, especially on platforms like Apple Music and Pocket Casts and uh, Anchor, uh, give the channel, I mean, surely you've subscribed, so you mm. get the episodes as they come, but give it a like or a review, a review or a thumbs up or five stars or whatever, mm, uh, because it puts us on <laughs> charts and people can then see us on charts and... Mm. That would be cool. I mean, be nice. we're well, not we're not on Patreon. We're not no. we're not blocking any of this content from you for a dollar. Except a month. the the our gaming histories. Not our gaming histories will be a thirty dollar. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at some <laughs> stage. We'll get to it. But yeah, it would it would make us feel warm and fuzzy inside, and would help us reach more people, which is yeah. always the goal. Exactly. So yeah, I think cool. that that's a wrap. Yeah, I really enjoyed this, and Me too. we will be chatting with you again next week, Matty. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, so you put me on the spot like, yes, Matty. And I'm like, well, you no, want fine. me to say? No, it's fine. <laughs> Goodbye. Calabi bar. XXL. <laughs>